Hello! Ah, the mighty Neo Geo AES, a home console based on the same hardware as the arcade board, so the games looked exactly the same, which was amazing, and made it the most coveted item for schoolboys in the mid-90s. Particularly if you lived in the UK, because the thing was never released in Europe at all, so you just heard stories about somebody whose mate had got one from America, and it was really amazing. Apparently you didn't see them that much in America or Japan where it was released, because it was so massively expensive. But now SNK have returned from their semi-grave that they kind of inhabit to present us with the Neo Geo X Gold Limited Edition. Mm, limited. How limited? I haven't got a clue, but I'll tell you what, it wasn't bloody cheap. Uh, not as expensive as it was back in the day, but um, £180 for the revolutionary system within a system. Hey, what on earth does that mean? Including the Neo Geo X station with HDMI capabilities, Neo Geo X handheld for portable gaming, and Neo Geo X arcade stick for an authentic arcade experience. It's not really an authentic arcade experience with the home arcade stick, is it? You'd need a whole cabinet um, with cigarette burns on it, and you'd keep putting 10 peas in it, and half of them wouldn't work. Anyway, that's not the point. Um, the interesting thing here is it's got a docking station with HDMI capabilities, since mostly when you plug old consoles into modern tellies, they look like arse, so maybe they've done something clever to make it look better. We'll find out shortly. But anyway, as you've probably guessed, it's a handheld with a docking station. And an extra game, Ninja Masters game card included. So authentic, it's even got the utterly pointless extra apostrophe. Marvellous. Yep, they're very keen to uh, tickle our retro glands with this. Hey, nostalgia, give us your money! Look, they've even uh, made the box look like the old Neo Geo system, just to take away all subtlety. On the back... Ooh, what games we got, mister? 20 classic Neo Geo Advanced Entertainment games. Ooh, lovely. Three Counts Bount. That's boxing, if I remember. Fatal Fury. League Bowling. Puzzled. Alpha Mission 2. Fatal Fury Special. Magician Lord. Real Bout. Fatal Fury Special. Quite keen on the old Fatal Furies there. Art of Fighting. The King of Fighters 95. Metal Slug. Samurai Showdown 2. Baseball Stars 2. King of the Monsters. Mutation Nation. Super Sidekicks. Cyber Lip. I'm be brutally honest with you here, I actually thought that was Cyber Up was the name of that game, but I've just discovered it is apparently Cyber Lip. I never knew that. Last Resort, Nam 1975 and World Heroes Perfect, which if I remember is anything but perfect. And yep, there's our devices, the docking station that happens to look exactly like the old console, or well, damn near it anyway, the Neo Geo X handheld device with all the brains in, and an arcade stick for clicky action. Marvellous. Something slightly worrying. Um, we know it's licensed by SNK, obviously, and a company called Tomo have something to do with it. Well, I presume they're a company. It could just be a man called Tommy, who abbreviates his name strangely. But it's distributed by Blaze, which is often a bad sign. Um, they do these uh, sort of Mega Drive handheld systems, which are always a bit lacklustre. But hey, maybe this one's much better. Spoiler, it's still disappointing. Right. Let's have a look at the system itself, shall we? I'm going to do this in two parts. The first, we'll be looking at the handheld thing. The second, we'll be looking at the other bits and bobs. Right, I'm going to do a jump cut thing so I can change the camera angle. Bing! And here we go. Here it is, and quite nice and posh it looks too. It's got a lovely rubberized back with SNK written on it. Around the sides you've got volume controls, you've got headphones to plug in, plus and minus on the old brightness there, slots for the game card. Here is one of the game cards. You will notice it is an SD card. Technically not a proper SD card, though. They've uh, transposed some of the contacts, which is interesting. We'll get onto that later. I shall push that in there. If I can get it in. There we go. Um, it's got an on and off button, always important. It's got USB for charging and AV out for plugging directly into the telly and HDMI for plugging directly into the telly. Hang on, what do we need the docking station for? Hmm. And also buttons to play with. Again, quite important. So you've got L1, L2, R2, R1. They're not massively comfortable. It doesn't matter, of course, because no Neo Geo game uses more than four buttons, which are all on the face here. A, B, C, D, start, menu, and a very nice clicky controller. Now, the um, if you remember the Neo Geo Pocket Color, it had a fantastic little clicky controller to uh, move things around on. This is like a sort of modernised version of it. It's got a bit more travel because it's larger, which is a shame, because um, it's a really lovely control system, but it's almost impossible to, like, double tap left. I found it really hard. Uh, double tapping right is difficult as well. Fairly irrelevant, so you don't have to do that in any of these games, to my knowledge, but that's not the point. It might be a problem in the future. Honest, governor. Well, only thing left to do is turn it on, I suppose. On we go. Ooh, it's got an LED. That's a good start. 
Neo Geo X. <laughs> Neo Geo Trademark X. Okay, takes a little while to start. Here we go. Oh look, it's like the old startup, only different and silent. And eventually, here we go. You can select the game card there. There's a little battery meter for you. And, yep, go through the other games that are hardwired into it. Now, you may be amazed at this, thinking, my god, they've managed to miniaturize a whole Neo Geo into a thing like this, and my accent is weird. But, you'll be right about your accent, but completely wrong about the Neo Geo. It's bloody emulated. Seriously, it actually runs a version of Final Burn Alpha, the arcade game emulator they've just knocked off and stuck in a generic device. Ah, that's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? So, in fact, it's not really any different than playing it on your PSP 2000 that you've uh, hacked and got ROMs on. In fact, it's so similar that the early versions of these you can open up, and there is, in fact, a micro SD card glued to the motherboard that contains the BIOS and the ROMs. This is probably another reason why it's a slightly altered SD card that actually appears on it. Anyway, let's not let moan about that. Let's moan about other things, like the fact the screen's the wrong fucking shape. Seriously, it's in 16x9 widescreen. Why is it in 16x9 widescreen? All Neo Geo games are in 4x3. They hadn't invented widescreen there. So, when you start it, you press a button to get it into the right aspect ratio and end up having lots of the screen not used. I mean, obviously they've done that, because 16x9 screens are cheaper to buy wholesale at the moment, because, you know, they're still produced. Um, I think... What I would have done personally is I'd have just put a bloody bezel over that bit of the screen and had it everything just running in 4x3, because it looks like absolute arse when it scales it up, as we shall now demonstrate. Let's get out something uh, that's not going to be too difficult to show. Oh, um, or three count bat, maybe? No, let me Go on, last resort. A nice shooter. Oh, and the start button doesn't start it. You have to press A. Loads the ROM, and here we go. Sound is slightly off due to uh, emulation problems, I think, which is a bit of a shame. It's not far off, but um, mm, just enough to annoy you if you've played a lot of Neo Geo games in the past. Right, press L1, I believe. And there we are. It's actually not stretched and horrible anymore. Hooray! Press start. Right, level normal. Go. Couldn't play this for some years. It's like our type only, uh, I can't think of where to end that sentence. Right, begin. Oh man, this was so impressive back in the day, I presume. I can't ever remember playing this all the time. Well, the little controller is absolutely lovely. Really like that. What I don't like so much is the screen, to be honest with you. It's a little bit on the, uh, you know, the brightness is okay, but the colour contrast is weak. It's not as colourful as it should be. Which isn't a good thing, because it means it's not as good as the PSP screen. And the disappointment there is, of course, you can just get a hacked PSP for almost nothing and stick loads of games on it and what, this isn't actually as good a method. Oh dear, it's starting to fall down a bit here. Also, the emulation's not as good on this. As we said, the uh, sound's a bit off, and if that's not enough, which it is, um, you get quite bad vertical sync problems in some places, and it's all just not quite as good as playing it on a bloody PSP 2000, which is ridiculous. Ridiculous, um, for the amount of money they're charging for this particularly. And yeah, the controlly bit is nice, but not enough to make this the better option. Very, very disappointing. Hey, let's go into stretch vision Okay, kind of regret doing that. Let's go immediately back. Most of these buttons don't do anything, if I recall. Uh, well, that one does the same as that. Let's pause. Let's pause. And menu. Let's quit. Yes, let's do that thing. Oh, dearie me. Well, um, shall we just stick another game on to say we did? Fatal Fury Special, that'll do. Just see Terry Bogard jumping around a bit. Um, then we can start moaning about the other bloody things that are wrong with it. <sighs> Seriously, this isn't great. And there he is. Good old Terry with his hat. Good old Geese with his stupid name. And good old... Find his name. Rudel, that's it. Oh, let's play it on normal. And watch the little head go wibbly. I don't know if we've ever played this specific version. Um, we want Terry, he's got his own hat. And we shall fight this man, because he's very old and hasn't even got any shoes. 
The first stage. Oh, he didn't have shoes. He took them off. He lied to me. Woo. Oh dear. I can't remember how to play this at all. Ah, there's Bernie Knuckle or something. Oh, twin street uh, levels. That's always confusing. Oh, I can't remember the moves. Help. Oh, yeah, there's something. Well, I'm sure you get the idea. It's a system that plays games. And, as has been repeatedly said, let's turn it off there, isn't actually as good an option as this, which is freaking ridiculous, frankly. Right, <clears throat> let's have a talk about the other bits and bobs that aren't so good with it then. Yeah, it's annoyed me. For starters, there's absolutely no way to save games. So if you're playing something like Magician Lord on it, tough shit. It's not going to happen properly. Also, it's only got the American BIOS on it, which means none of the games have any blood in. So that's really annoying as well. The battery life is about three, three and a half hours, which isn't really good enough for a modern handheld device. And, uh, bleh, bleh. Deary me. As you've probably guessed inside, it's sort of got generic parts, uh, similar to these multi-emulation consoles, like the Dingu and all those things. Um, except it's built slightly nicer. Um, it's also got quite a powerful um, CPU, considering uh, what sort of thing it is. So it'd be interesting if people could hack it. And indeed, they already have, for the simple reason that on the early models, as I said earlier, everything is stored in a micro SD card, so by fiddling around that you can change it. It's also possible to just put uh, ROMs in a certain format on an SD card, rewire the pins on the SD card so they're transposed, and it will then just read them off as if it was an official thing. Obviously rewiring the insides of an SD card not being quite that easy because it's fiddly, but it is doable. So there we are, that is the handheld device. But Stuart, you screech at me as you fly past in a zeppelin, we're not interested in all that cack. We want to see the mighty thing that plugs into the telly. That's what we want to put our money down for. Who oh, blimey, you thought you were disappointed with this. Wait until you see this piece of shit. Right. <clears throat> Docking station. Comes with a power adapter, which is handy. And also comes with an HDMI cable. Inexplicably, the one that plugs in here is mini HDMI. I don't know why that is. It doesn't really matter. And, of course, the arcade stick. But we'll come on to that in a moment. <sighs> I think I'll just put a cartridge in it. I can't, it's too big, because this is an arcade one. Uh, King of Fighters 96, I think. Also, it doesn't actually go in there anyway, which is really disappointing. Wouldn't it be nice if it just slotted in? See, it's even almost the right size, but no. Wait for it. It opens up like that, and literally you just plug things straight in. It just has a through port. That really is it. <laughs> ah, dearie me. USB for the controller. Um, menu button, and on the back, HDMI out, standard AV out, and DC in. As you can imagine, the standard AV out is just component ca- no, not component cables, sorry, composite cables. It's not even RGB, so it looks like absolute shit on a modern television, and to be honest, looks pretty bad on an old CRT. For other reasons we'll come to in a moment. Oh, dearie me. This thing should just be made of pure disappointment. So yeah, that's the docking station. Have a quick look at the joystick. It's very, very thin and light plastic, but otherwise seems to be quite um, authentic. As far as I can tell, never actually played on one of the original systems myself. I played these games in the arcade. It's got actually quite a nice feel to it. Probably micro switched. No micro switches on the buttons, but they do uh, go down quite nicely. Yeah, that's not a bad controller. And it's also a standard USB thingy, so you can plug it into your PC and, you know, play MAME or whatever on it. So that is something of use. However, it's not as nice a controller as things like those Hori sticks for the um, 360 and the PS3, and you can pick them up for like 25 quid if you shop around, so I would recommend one of those if you do want something to plug into your PC. <clears throat> player 1, Player 2. don't know where you get the Player 2 joystick from because you can't actually plug anything else into it. The only thing I've got to work in here is the joystick that came with it, which is a shame. So, what does the HDMI out look like then? Here's a hint. Crap. Seriously, really, really bad. It's really grainy and horrible and blurg. It, uh, uh, and also, the Neo Geo original um, resolution, 320 across, 224 down, yeah? This scales it to 320 across and 240 down, which it then doubles for the HDMI. Which is really annoying, because it stretches the game slightly. Why not just put in small black borders at the top and bottom and keep it the same resolution, you cretins? 
Deary me. Anyway, I suppose I'd better show you what it looks like then. Here's some footage I captured. I'll warn you now, this will probably look better heavily encoded on YouTube as it actually does to the naked eye on a television. Here we are. Here's a bit of Mutation Nation, which is sort of a disappointing final fight type of game. Um, you can probably tell that the vertical sync screen tearing stuff going on there is horrible. It's really tall and nasty. The graphics are just, well, as you can see, well, probably, a real sort of grainy mess. Um, the reason, incidentally, for the uh, horrible screen tearing is apparently the outputs at a strange refresh rate, actually below that of HDMI standard. So while it's technically something that can be fixed in software, who knows if it will be, you know. It's all a bit strange and nasty, and the sound lag and uh, overall sound of it is even further out than when you're playing on the handheld. Seriously, have a listen to this. This is the intro to the Neo Geo turning on, and if you had a Neo Geo or a Neo Geo fan back in the day, this will make you weep. Ugh, I feel so dirty. So there we go. It's expensive and it's a massive fricking disappointment, to the point of being an embarrassment, frankly, when you look at this thing. I mean, this isn't a great unit, but the dock there is just a load of old pants, and I hate it and I want it to bleed to death while I point at it and laugh. But other than that, I was really impressed. I'm even lying about that bit. <clears throat> so yeah, Basically, if you want to play handheld Neo Geo games, get your PSP out and do it cheap and on the go, and it'll be better. It's got better emulation and a better screen. The uh, controller isn't quite as nice, but um, with the later PSPs, that's not much of a problem. For playing Neo Geo stuff in your telly, um, try and get a laptop or something with TV out, I think. You can probably pick one up that's powerful enough to emulate cheaper than that bloody thing.